Welcome to our next video about learning the tuning basics and understanding tuning better. Again, I did a guide on how to tune a Speedrino or ECU basically that is being tuned via uh, Tune Studio. So, for example, if you want to tune your ECU, watch that. And if you don't really know what some things in that ECU tuning terms means, keep on watching because this time we are going to discuss um, what lambda or wideband and narrowband oxygen sensors are. And if you can get away with a cheap 30 euro eBay one or AliExpress one, or if you need to pay 200 bucks for an AEM or whatever. So first of all, as an example here, we have an AFR table from a map that I just created. We can see that we are seeing AFR values from 11.5 to 14.7, 14.9. And this is about the range you need plus uh, or minus some, because you could run richer if you added more boost, for example, or you could run leaner if you, for example, wanted to save some fuel. But in theory, somewhere between AFR 11.5 and 15 might be enough for some people. So maybe a cheap gauge might be enough. Let's look at something on AliExpress because you can find deals there, right? Well, kind of. As we can see here, there are a bunch of things for 30 bucks and uh, even some for like 17, although it only has like a one star rating. So uh, maybe not the best thing to buy. But we're gonna look at this for a hundred or here. That one is 12 bucks and has been sold 82 times. All right, so what is this? This is only the gauge. So basically probably gauge and sensor is going to be this gauge and sensor, 22 euros. And that is plus shipping, of course, as it is always. Okay, so could you just get this and uh, read all your values that you need? Mm, not really, because you can already see the sensor that you get is this sensor right here. It looks like a normal Lambda or O2 sensor, but it only has four wires, as you can see here. So that's kind of a way to tell if the gauge is supporting a wideband or narrowband sensor. What's the difference between a wideband and narrowband sensor? As you can already see, the signal line voltage is zero to one volt. So that already tells you something because if I look at a wideband, which we are just looking at on eBay, looking at, for example, this AEM unit, I use those all the time and you have a voltage of zero to five volt. So it already says here 10 to 20 AFR. So that obviously covers everything we need, basically. Uh, on E85, it would even be different and on different uh, fuels, it may, will also be able to show different values, but that's not going to uh, going to be relevant for us now. We want to know 0.5 volt, that's what a wideband gauge puts out. The issue with that one is we only have 0.021 volt. That already gives you a hint on what this thing can display, because it's not much. Looking at a narrowband oxygen sensor output, if it's analog like this one, then it can reach a maximum or read a maximum of about AFR 14.3 to 15.5 or thereabout. So it can't read much of anything. And there also is quite a big dip in the middle. So you won't be able to see any accurate, accurate values. So you can only measure Lambda 1 or AFR 14.7 with those. So you kind of know if your engine is running lean or rich, but for a application where the engine is boosted and you want to run AFR 11 something, that's totally not usable. And even for an, for an NA application where you want to be running at least 13.5 or maybe richer, that's also not be 
not gonna be able to read much. You can just monitor if your engine is maybe running way too lean or way too rich. Though there is something different here, you can also get wideband gauges here on AliExpress, which are about somewhere between 90 and 110 bucks. For example, this one. And that is actually a wideband gauge. I have actually used that. It works, yes, but first of all, it's not a genuine uh, Bosch sensor, which the Bosch sensors alone cost about 100 bucks. So kind of figures that it's not original. And the gauges, they don't have a ECU output. At least I didn't find one. Uh, so that's kind of making tuning difficult and uh, yeah, that's all in all maybe not as reliable I have seen them break a lot. Some people have complained about them only lasting like a few days to a few weeks Mine worked very well. I didn't have any issues with it though I did not have it installed for maybe longer than a few months and also did not drive the car daily So I don't know how it will perform on a daily application so I would also consider staying away from those because while well, yes, they are cheaper um, You can get the AM gauges for about 200 euros So that might be something to consider and these at least last I have never had a sensor fail I have only killed one gauge through my own stupidity But uh, that has nothing to do with AM and that is so much for the uh, wideband versus narrowband sensors and I hope none of you are going to buy a narrowband from now on because the you now know the actual difference. That's it from me. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.